The ADA LM2000, also known as M2K, signal generator has many interesting capabilities, one of which is that it is an arbitrary waveform generator, and that means it can produce arbitrary waveforms. The way this is done is using its, its buffer method. So you click on buffer, and then you can load a file that represents a waveform of any sort that you like. And, and then it shows you a picture of the file that you loaded. And then when you run the signal generator, you can see the output on the oscilloscope. So I was wondering what I could do with this. And I had the idea of creating a waveform that would let me test the advanced triggering mechanisms of my siglent oscilloscope. The waveform that I created looks like this. You can think of it as a square wave with flaws. So it starts out as a square wave with a 10 microsecond period. But then there are some problems with it. For example, there's a narrow pulse uh, shown, shown there. And then also some, some runt pulses, which are ones that don't reach full length. There's a wide one and a narrow one. And then finally, there's a mi missing pulse, where the, there should be a pulse and it isn't there at all. And the idea is to use the signalant oscilloscope's triggering mechanisms to trigger on these various flaws. The file that represents the waveform is just a text file in this case, and it consists of numbers that are voltages. So in my file, there are zeros and, and ones because it's that, that square, square wave. And the, the signal generator plays out these voltages according to the sample rate that you select in the signal generator screen. So we can load this file uh, into, the, into the M2K signal generator and we can view it using the oscilloscope. So we'll go to the oscilloscope. Let's see, start the signal generator and start the oscilloscope. Um, but we'll find that, that it, it's actually difficult to trigger on this signal because it's irregular. Let's do some signal single captures and we can see what it looks like. You can see the missing pulse there and the narrow pulse. And this irregularity makes it, makes it hard for the Scopey oscilloscope to trigger in a nice way. The idea is to use the Siglent oscilloscope's more advanced triggering mechanisms to try to trigger specifically on the flaws, which will get, let you get a good view where you can zoom in and, and uh, understand exactly what the signal, signal is doing. We'll connect the M2K's W1 signal output pin and a ground to the Siglent oscilloscope using this cable that I made. The connection also involves a 50 ohm through terminator, so the uh, the load that on the, the termination load on the Siglent will be 50 ohms, and that means in the signal generation GUI on M2K Scopy, you have to pick load equals 50 ohm to make the signal levels match. So now we're connected to the Siglent oscilloscope and viewing its display. And you can see that it's not triggering very well. It's, it's actually acting just like the M2K oscilloscope did. And that's because the waveform is irregular. Let's first try to trigger on the narrow pulse. And for that, we'll go to the trigger type menu here and try to pick something other than edge. In particular, we'll pick pulse. And, um, and then here, there are several things to pick. Channel three, that's correct, that's our input. Positive polarity, because it's a rising pulse, that's correct. And we're going to look for pulses that are less than or equal than a certain width. And right now, that width is set to 729 nanoseconds, but that pulse in my arbitrary waveform is actually about one microsecond. So if I increase that to a Oh, to above one microsecond, we should start to see that pulse. It should start to trigger on it. So going up, 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 and there we go. So the uh, the siglent now, using its pulse trigger type, can 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 trigger on on that narrow pulse, and we can look at the waveform stably and also zoom in on the narrow pulse if we wanted to analyze it further. Next, let's try to find the, the missing pulse. And for that, we go back to the trigger menu and look for something helpful there. And a, I think the one we want is called dropout triggering. And what that looks for is the absence of a pulse. And so here, there are similar choices to make. And uh, those are all correct. Channel three still falling. We're looking for, a, we'll, we'll use the edge form of this. And now this time, like before, 
is is telling it to look for a, a missing pulse within a time period. The period of our waveform here is about 10 microseconds, so we would have to adjust that higher in in order to find the missing pulse. So as I bring it up, as soon as it hits 10 microseconds, we should see a trigger, and there it is. There's our missing pulse. So we could analyze that further, just, just like the case with the narrow pulse. Now let's try to find the runt pulses. Recall that a runt pulse is one that fails to reach full height, and in my test signal I have two. I have one that's wide and one that's narrow. The oscilloscope's process for triggering on a runt is to notice when the signal has risen above a low threshold but then failed within some time to, to cross a high threshold. That's how you detect a runt. And since I have two widths, the nature of how the oscilloscope's timing will dictate which of the two or both it triggers on. Let's go after the narrow pulse. We'll select dropout, um, we'll move from dropout to runt, and then in the runt menu we have to make some choices. Since we're going to go for the smaller, the narrow runt first, we need to change this to less than or equal to. And then we need to go to this page and set the lower and upper thresholds to something reasonable. So for the lower threshold, let's try something like 100 millivolts approximately. And the upper threshold's probably fine at around 400. And, and then we have to adjust the time. The, um, this isn't triggering because there is no there is no runt with a size, with a width less than 283 nanoseconds, but if we increase this, we should at some point trigger. So let's just keep going up, and voila, we've we've uh, triggered on the narrow runt. Just so we can zoom in on it if we wish and zoom back out. Now suppose we went up further in in this threshold, this time threshold. In fact, up to five. Um, uh, to above five microseconds. Now we're actually triggering on both, uh, which makes the display a little bit unstable. Now let's try to trigger on the on the wider pulse. For that, we have to change the threshold to be greater than or equal to instead of less than or equal to, and then adjust once again this time. And as we go up above one, or now. Um, now we're triggering on the wider pulse, as, as expected. Now, if we went up even further, it stops triggering altogether, because neither of the pulses satisfy that relationship. And if we go down below one, then once again, it triggers on both. So in, in order to, to trigger on a specific width of runt, you have to adjust these timings very, very carefully. So I think this was an interesting use of the M2K signal generator. We used its arbitrary waveform capabilities to generate a signal that can be used to test and learn about the advanced triggering mechanisms that are available in the SIGLINT oscilloscope. The M2K oscilloscope doesn't have these triggering capabilities, but it's based on software, so maybe someday it'll be added. In any case, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this to be informative.